one interesting thing if I shake this solenoid I can hear the plunger move just a little bit but if I shake this one Hi, it's Bimmerzen and in this video I'm going to diagnose and replace a faulty oil pressure regulating solenoid on a BMW N43 engine. In my previous videos I did a full rebuild on this engine and that's because I had three spun conrod bearings and that was caused by a broken plastic chainrail guide and the pieces got sucked into the oil pickup and that clogged the mesh and caused oil starvation. And unfortunately, the previous owner just kept on driving the car until the engine gave up and uh, that caused the oil filter to get perforated and the bearing material started circulating through the engine and that caused even more damage. I had to replace the crankshaft and the cone rods and also all of the bearings, gaskets and seals. And I also had to polish the camshaft journals because they were pretty scorned up. I also had to disassemble the Venus units and clean out all of the bearing material. And I also found out that uh, one of the Venus solenoids was stuck. So I had to unstuck it and clean it. And I also cleaned the oil pressure regulating solenoid. And uh, yeah, I did this rebuild on a low budget. So I just cleaned all of the components and uh, reused them. But now that I'm driving the car, I noticed that sometimes I get oil pressure warning. So in the morning when I start the engine and it's cold, I'm gonna get occasional low oil pressure warning. So uh, I suspect that this is the culprit. So now in this video, I'm going to try and show you how to diagnose this issue and also how to replace it. If you're interested in this rebuild series, I'm going to put all of the links to the videos down below in the description. Okay, let's get into the video. So the BMW's N43 engine has electronically controlled oil pressure. So that means that during the idle, the oil pressure is about uh, 2.6, 2.8 bars. And uh, if you're just driving casually on the highway, the oil pressure is gonna be between three and four bars. And uh, if you have full power requirement, then the oil pressure is gonna go up to about six bars. So this way you can save a little bit of power and a little bit of fuel. And uh, this is all achieved via variable displacement oil pump, which is controlled with this electric solenoid. So when the system detects low power requirement, it's gonna activate the valve and that's gonna change the displacement of the oil pump and less power is needed. You can see that this solenoid has a little mesh and uh, after 15 years or 10 years of uh, neglect, you can be sure that this mesh can get clogged. And in my case, when the system was full of debris, I suspect that the solenoid is leaking or it gets occasionally stuck. So this usually happens when the engine is cold or when it's uh, really hot and you suddenly stop. Like if you're going off the highway and come to a full stop, then you might have a red oil light on your dashboard. It is very, very important to address any oil pressure issues right away. Otherwise, you're gonna risk destroying your engine. I'm now inside of the car and I have my cable connected to the laptop, which is running IMPA. So now I'm going to show you how this error looks like. So first I'm going to go into the N43 menu and then I'm going to go and uh, scan for errors and uh, let's show the short list and here it is and if i go to the freeze frame i have a little bit more data the code for this error is uh, 30c1 motor druck regelung statisch druck zu niedrig so that means that the oil pressure is too low it also says here that this error will not cause the check engine light to turn on and the P code is 15A0. And uh, let's check the additional data. East Uldruk, uh, that means the actual oil pressure, 1600 HPA, that means 1.6 bar. And the next line is Uldruk Zolvert, and that means uh, the desired value. And this says 3.1 bar. 
So uh, at the first glance, you might think, wow, <laughs> something is really, really messed up here. And it is in a way because the DME or the IMPA does not report the actual value for the all pressure correctly. It does not account for one bar of atmospheric pressure. So uh, this is actually 2.6 bar and uh, this is not that horrible. So about half a bar difference. And uh, the next data that we have is all temperature 20 degrees. So the engine was cold and the RPM is 1100. Now I know that when I started that morning, the error was not present. So I know that this error happens mostly on cold starts. Another interesting thing is that when this error appears, the system goes into emergency mode. So the valve is no longer being regulated by DME and uh, the oil pressure is regulated by the internal oil pressure regulator integrated into the oil pump. So it basically has fail-safe system like in the normal oil pump. And this is what determines the oil pressure. In this case, the engine is going to operate in emergency mode for the whole driving session. Let me show you how that looks like. I'm going to go back and exit the menu and I'm going to go to F6 Steuern and then F2 and F2 again. And here I can see the RPMs, the desired pressure and the actual pressure. And you can see the actual pressure is quite high, about 6 bar, almost 7 bar. So that is definitely not uh, regulated by the valve. Now let's check the valve. So I'm going to go back and F3. And I can see 0%. That means that the valve is not operated. And yeah, you can drive the car in this mode, but it's not going to be electronically regulated. Now I'm going to clear the error. I've restarted the engine and uh, let's see what the pressure is now desired about 2.7 bars but actual pressure 1.5 1.4 1.6 so about 0 0.2 0 0.3 bar of difference so the oil pressure is definitely jumping around a bit too much let's check the valve activation 26 25 percent that's a bit low. That means that it tries to add a bit more pressure. So the less it is activated, the higher the pressure. So ideally, this should be above 40%. But if the activation on the warm engine drops below 35%, then I would definitely suspect there's something going on with the oil valve. So what I think it's happening here is in the morning when I start for work, I accidentally uh, let the engine stall out just a little bit and that causes the RPMs to drop and the oil pressure to drop below the thresholds and that throws the low oil pressure warning. And uh, I know that uh, the oil pickup is not clogged because I've just rebuilt this engine. And I also know that I reused the original control valve which is probably now giving me these problems. So I think that the next logical action is to try and replace the oil control solenoid and uh, see if that solves the issue. To get to that solenoid valve I need to remove the air duct, the air box and the alternator. Don't lose the mounting bush for the airbox. To remove the alternator, I need to remove the serpentine belt. And to do that, I have to release the tension on the tensioner. I need to disconnect the negative battery cable. Now I can remove the nut on the positive cable and remove the plus cable terminal. Next, I have to remove the three 13 millimeter bolts, two at the bottom and one at the top. There's also a connector at the back. I have to disconnect it. Here's the solenoid and now I can press in the lock and unplug it. And then I have to remove this hex nut. 
I'm going to clean this area a little bit so that I don't uh, introduce any dirt into the hole. Be careful not to lose the bolt. I'm going to spray this area with WD-40. Sometimes they get pretty stuck. I'm going to try and remove it by hand. Uh, but this engine was just rebuilt, so I know that this solenoid is not stuck. But uh, if you're doing this on your engine and it's still the first solenoid, then it's probably pretty stuck. So you have to be really, really careful not to break off this plastic part. Uh, it's probably best to use uh, some sort of uh, vice grips and uh, grip it here and try to rotate it a little bit until it releases. I've seen people uh, break off this part of the solenoid and the plunger part was stuck inside of the engine block which is a total pain in the ass so be careful let's check the mesh okay i can see just a little bit of bearing material that's still in the system from the rebuild because it's really really hard to remove all of the debris from the system but otherwise it's pretty clean here's the solenoid that i'm going to use and this actually came from a donor engine so uh, this is not the new solenoid and i have no idea if this solenoid actually works correctly uh, but this donor engine had no issues with any bearing material in the oil uh, so i think it should be still good now, if you're doing this for a client, obviously you will definitely want to replace this with a new part. But for me, I'm doing this uh, DIY, uh, it's worth a try. So first, I'm just going to transplant the O-ring from this solenoid to the replacement solenoid because uh, this O-ring is new from the rebuild. A little bit of oil and it's ready to be installed. One interesting thing, if I shake this solenoid, I can hear the plunger move just a little bit. But if I shake this one, I can hear it quite a bit more. Shake test. So there's definitely something uh, different on the old solenoid. Maybe it's just worn out. A spritz of oil. And it's in. The bolt has to be torqued to 9 newton meters. Now I just have to reconnect it and make sure that it clicks. To get everything back, I just have to reverse the procedure. And I've got everything back together. Let's start the engine. I'm back in the car. I have the IMPA connected and I'm already in the menu for the oil pressure. Now let's start the engine. And let's see. So the oil pressure is pretty good. Pretty spot on. Let's check the activation. It's a bit higher than before, 35, 36%. And before it was 25, 26, 27, something like that. But of course the engine is not warmed up. I took the car for a drive, so the engine is nice and warm. Now let's check for errors no errors so that's good and let's observe the oil pressure and i can see right away that it actually follows the desired pressure much closer than before so the valve was definitely worn out you can see that the numbers pretty much match nice and now the activation is much higher, so 40-41%. So yeah, I think that uh, this is fixed. Nice. And that brings me to the end of the video. Uh, I guess I've learned the lesson. It's better to replace the solenoids. So uh, thanks for watching. Consider subscribing for more N43 or N42 and 46 content. Keep zen and continue the art of BMW maintenance.